Okay, Carmel was a very famous mathematician. He came up with a lot of stuff. Um, he had a proof. Uh, it was his last proof. Uh, that he claimed that he proved, but he didn't really prove it. And many, many people spent many, many years trying to prove um, his last proof. And I think they finally did, but it was way long after um, he had first come up with it. But anyways, uh, he has this theorem on local extrema, uh, that your relative extrema occur only at critical numbers. Okay, so the, this topic, I've seen this tested uh, in those, like, which one of the following statements are true kind of questions. Um, so, if your value is at local minimum or maximum, then where that occurs is a critical number of your function, okay? If something is a local minimum or maximum, then it occurs at a critical number. Now, it's not necessarily true the other way around. Just because something's a critical number does not guarantee that you have a local minimum or maximum there. It's one of those statements that you have to be careful about, okay? So if it's a local minimum or maximum, then it occurs at a critical number, not necessarily vice versa. You do not always have a local min or max at every critical number, okay? Um, so here's an example of that. X cubed, okay? X cubed has the derivative of 3x squared, and 3x squared obviously equals 0 at 0, but if you look at the graph of x cubed, at x equals zero, that's not a maximum or a minimum, okay? That is not a maximum or a minimum. Um, it changes what we call concavity, which is what we're getting ready to talk about in the next couple of days. Okay, this part of the curve is what we call the concave down, okay? See so how it's kind of curved downward? This part of the uh, curve is concave up, okay? Um, but that's not a local minimum or maximum, even though zero is a critical number that's not a minimum or maximum for this function. So, if you are asked to find extrema on a closed interval, then first of all, you need to find your critical numbers. Okay, how do we do that? We take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and we're finding the places where it's undefined. Then, and this is the part people tend to forget, and sometimes I'm not gonna lie, even I forget it, um, you have to evaluate your function, um, this is not a part you forget, number two, Identify your function, evaluate your function at each critical number. Everybody remembers that part. It's the third part that people tend to forget. You've got to evaluate the value of your function at your endpoints. And here's why. Um, this example that I have drawn up here, okay, uh, obviously C and D are critical numbers. Okay, they, There's a local minimum at C and a local maximum at D. Uh, C is actually the absolute minimum. D is not the absolute maximum, though. The absolute maximum on this interval occurs at the first endpoint. If you do not check the endpoints, you have no way of guaranteeing that those local maxes and mins are actually absolute maxes and mins. So you can't forget to check the endpoints as well. So, uh, let's do a few problems here. We're going to find the extrema of the function 3x to the fourth minus 4x cubed on the interval from negative 1 to negative 2. So step 1 is to take the derivative. f prime of x is 12x cubed minus 12x squared. We've got to set that equal to 0. It's not going to be undefined anywhere because it's a polynomial expression. Polynomials are never undefined. Uh, if we set that equal to zero, we're going to have to factor, take out a GCF. So the GCF is 12x squared, and we take that out, we're left with x minus 1. So we've got 12x squared is equal to zero, so that says x equals zero is a critical number and x minus 1 is equal to 0, so that says x equals 1 is a critical number. Now, we weren't just asked to find the critical numbers, we were asked to find the extrema, so we need to come over here and we need to find f of negative 1, because it is our endpoint, uh, f of 0, f of 1, and f of 2. I think it's helpful to get in the habit of just listing them all before you start solving for them so that you remember, got to check the endpoints. Okay, I have to check the endpoints. 
I can't just check my critical values. Now we're plugging this into the original because we want to know the values of the original function because we're talking about the maxes and mins of the original. Okay, so negative 1 to the 4th is positive 1, so we have 3 plus 4 because negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, so that gives us a value of 7 when x is negative 1 on the original function. When we plug in 0, we get 0. When we plug in 1, we get 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. And f of 2, 2 to the 4th is 16, times 3 is 48. 2 cubed is 8, times 4 is 32. 48 minus 32 is 16. So, on the interval from negative 1 to 2, let's see here, this is our minimum and this is our maximum. So, you can say on negative 1, negative 2, we have a um, absolute max. at 216 and an absolute minimum at 1, negative 1. Now, 0, 0 may be a relative minimum, it may be a relative maximum, we don't know without looking at the graph at this point. But I'm not concerned about that. I just want to know um, the absolutes. Okay, let's look at example B. 2x minus 3x to the 2 thirds from negative 1 to positive 3. So let's begin by taking the derivative. We get 2 minus 3 times 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. So that gives us 2 minus 2x to the negative 1 third for our derivative when we simplify it. We set that equal to 0. Uh, I'm going to add the 2x to the negative 1 third since it's negative. And divide by 2, so x to the negative 1 third is equal to 1. Okay, um, technically to solve this we need to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. Negative one third times negative three is one, so that gets us where we want to be. And one to the negative third, one to any power is still one. So that means that our critical number is x equals one. There's another part to this because it's x to the negative one third. How do we get rid of negative exponents? We move them to the denominator. So we could have also rewritten that expression like this. Okay, remember we can get critical numbers uh, when the derivative is undefined. So this would be undefined where that denominator is equal to zero. So where x to the one third is equal to zero. F prime is undefined. So that also says x equals zero is a critical number for us. So we need to check negative one, zero, one, and three. Two critical numbers, 
and the inputs. So we're plugging that into the original. So we get negative 2, um, negative 1 to the 2 over 3. You square negative 1, so that becomes positive 1. The cube root of positive 1 is 1, so that's just minus 3. So that's negative 5. f of 0 is 0. f of 1 would be 2. Uh, same result as negative 1. Nope, not the same result. Positive 2 minus 3, so negative 1. And then plug in 3, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 times 6 to the 2 thirds, the cube root of 36, which is not a nice pretty number. We do need to find out what its value is because we've got to be able to compare it to the others. So 6 minus 3 times the cube root of 36. Negative 3.905. So that didn't change anything. This is still our min. Negative 1, negative 5 is the min. And 0, 0 is the max. Now, um, right now, these are typically calculator inactive questions, but I do want to show you so that you can see um, to confirm. I do encourage you to do this at this point while you uh, are allowed to use your calculators just to make sure you don't miss anything, especially with these weird functions with... Um, <coughs> My window negative one two three mm, let's try negative five five nope that's not gonna be big enough negative six okay um so here you can see this weird kind of point right here let me actually make my line that's a little bit smaller so that we can see that a little bit better okay uh, there's a cusp there at zero um, it's that sharp point uh, but it is a maximum okay we can see our absolute minimum on this interval on the left side the negative one negative five that's our absolute minimum. Um, our maximum is at zero, zero. Okay, we're going to try to make it back up to zero here on the end. What did I do wrong when I calculated that? Because that's not. Two times three is six. Six squared is 36. The key root. Three squared. I did six squared. There we go. That should be the cube root of nine. Silly. And that's why if you have the calculator, you should check your results graphically. That is much better. Negative point two four zero. Okay, it doesn't change the fact that it's a maximum, but now it just matches my graph. Okay, I get really, I get pretty close to the x-axis there, but um, this value over here is still zero, um, so that is still our maximum on the interval. And notice that one negative one is a relative minimum. Okay, uh, now we're not focusing on that right now. We wouldn't be able to tell that without having our calculator, and this is supposed to be a non-calculator exercise. But um, I do want to point that out, that one negative one is a minimum, so it's a relative, okay? All right, let's do one more problem. Let's do a trig function here. Uh, we've got 